This is Kendra. I've had Delphi for two months now and made four radically different games. A user versus AI card game. A click and drag educational game. Put things that start with L in the library. Put things that start with H in the h h hospital. Lemon. A point and click adventure game. And Kendra, heavily pregnant defender of Earth, in which the user plays as me using WASD to walk around and other keyboard commands to fight aliens. In this video, I'll show you how to put animated WASD walking in your own games, as well as how to create the illusion of a 3D environment and how to restrict your user's movements with walls and other obstacles. Let's begin by making this little demo game together. Note that the stick man can walk in front of or behind the tree, and that he can fall off the island. The first thing we need are still images of our character taking steps. For each of the four directions, left, right, toward, and away, you'll need multiple images. You can draw your character in MS Paint, making multiple versions with the legs in different positions, then make the background transparent using the magic wand feature of Paint.net. For the island demo, I only made three images per direction, but the more the better. For Kendra Defender, I used 7 to 12 per direction, taken from video of me walking in front of a green screen. There too, I use paint.net to create the transparent background. Once you have your gallery of images, open Delphi Builder and create a form with an appropriate background image, your character, and crucially, a list box that you name something like Keyboard Input. You must equip the list box to receive keyboard input by writing the command keyboard input dot set focus in your form's on create event. Next, create a string variable called movement direction. Then, use your list box's on key down event to instruct it to set movement direction to away, toward, right, or left when W, A, S, or D is clicked. Use your list boxes on key up event to have it set movement direction to none when the user stops holding down a key. Name your character. The next step is to create two timers, one to control the actual movement of your character and one to handle the walking animation. Here is the code you want in the actual movement timer. If movement direction is set to away, which is only the case when the user is holding down W, the character's position on the y-axis will decrease. Moving toward means an increase on the y-axis. Left is a decrease on the x-axis, and right is an increase on the x-axis. The character's speed is determined by the interval property of the timer. The default of 1000 is too slow. I like 30. That's all you need to get your character moving. But he's not yet animated. To animate it, we need the second timer plus a new integer variable. I'll call mine animation counter. The animation timer's job is to cycle between the multiple images you have of your character moving in the current direction. So make the animation counter variable increase by one each go round until it reaches the number of individual images you have per direction, in my case three, and then return to zero. The rest of the code in your animation timer will change the appearance of your character based on the current movement direction and the current value of animation counter, using your character name dot bitmap dot load from file followed by the relevant file name, bounded by apostrophes and parentheses. Changing the interval of the animation timer changes how fast your character's legs appear to pump. Fiddle around until you find an interval that looks right with your actual movement speed. 
Congratulations! Now you have animated walking with WASD. Just one problem. Your character can walk off the island without falling and walk clear off the edge of the screen. We need to set some boundaries. This is a photo of one of my whiteboards when I was hard at work on Kendra Defender. It's a map of the living room showing all the barriers my character can walk into. At the specific time the photo was taken, I was coding all the places she had to come to a stop moving in the W or away direction, which is why all the arrows are pointing up. She can run into the back wall, the shelf, the front of the chair, or she can pass through the archway into the kitchen. In my Kendra Defender code, before my character moves, I call a procedure I wrote called Check for Barriers. As an example of what goes on in Check for Barriers, the code that keeps my character from walking into the shelf says, if you're in the living room and your movement direction is away, should you find yourself between 150 and 331 on the x-axis, that's the width of the shelf, then when you get to 130 on the y-axis, stop! Set the movement direction to none! For our island demo, let's keep things really simple with just four barriers. The character reaches the left side of the island when his position on the x-axis equals 96. He reaches the right side of the island when his position on the x-axis is 568. He reaches the back of the island when his position on the y-axis is 88, and the front when it's 152. How did I get those numbers? I simply moved my character around in design time and looked at the coordinates indicated by the object inspector. For a more complicated game like Kendra Defender, you'll find it useful to see your character's coordinates in real time as you test your game. The easiest way to do that is with a testing timer with an interval of 1 that prints the coordinates to labels. You can always make the labels invisible when other people play your game. And don't forget to set your keyboard input list box to invisible too. So what would a check for barriers procedure look like for our island game? If we made a boring version where the guy couldn't fall off the island, it would look like this. It tells us for each of the four barriers when to stop. The only difference in the grimmer version is that going over the barrier would instead call a procedure that would produce the splashing noise, make the corpse visible, and show those words you fell off the island. One last thing before I go. Let's talk about the tree. How do we make our character able to walk in front of or behind it? Our character is in line with the tree when his position on the y-axis is 128. So we add to check for barriers two special instructions for crossing that line. If the character is moving away from us when he crosses y equals 128, that is, entering the part of the island behind the tree, we put the tree in front of the character using bring to front. If the character is moving toward us when he crosses the line, we bring the character to front. Bring to front works well in simple scenes like our island, but if you have lots of overlapping objects, it can get confusing. In that case, try doubling up your objects. Have a tree that is always behind your character and an exact duplicate in the exact same place called front tree that is always in front of your character. When the character crosses y equals 128, make front tree visible or invisible as required. This concludes my tutorial on animated walking. Happy gramming!